All right, we are going to start looking at how to make a bas relief. So first thing you need to do is have a piece of clay that has been rolled out to approximately a half inch thick. You're gonna smooth it on both sides because remember, by smoothing it, you are going to minimize cracking. It helps get the clay particles the same way. You make sure there's no weird folds or cracks or air bubbles, and it makes it just a nicer form. Now, most of the time when you roll out clay, it's not gonna be perfect, so we're going to have to patch it and um, clean up our edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a nice, clean corner that blends together better, makes it nice and even, and easy to blend and make a cohesive edge there. Then I'm going to flip it because just because I blended it on one side doesn't mean it's gone all the way through. And you're like, why are we not scoring and slipping? Well, remember when we have clay that is the same texture, we can do wet to wet. So here's my nice clay. It's all ready to go. So I'm going to use this to help build up the surfaces on my bas relief. So I want to make sure I keep my clay in a plastic bag and ready to go. So then you want to make sure you have your picture. So on here are a bunch of white edges and I want to make sure that it fits. So we're good. I'm going to trim off my white edges. Actually I'm going to trim a little bit of this off because there's a lot of foreground. And then I am going to have my nice uniform piece that is going to be my overall finished surface area. So cut all those off. So I'm going to smooth it to the surface. And I'm going to turn it so I can see it. And then. I'm going to trim it so that it is nice and even. Normally, I would have a ruler, but since I am making a video, of course I don't have it. So, remember, go over your corner so they make a nice clean corner. And you want to do this first so that once you've got your picture on there, you don't distort it. All right, so now I'm gonna take a pencil. It's just a straight up number two pencil. Mechanical pencils do not work that well for this. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to do the details of this. Don't press too hard, but use a firm enough pressure that the design will transfer onto the clay through the pressure. Make sure you get in there and do all the details. And we want to do this quickly so that I'm going to do some of these little freckles. I'm busy. I'm sorry I can't come to the door. to get in here. Make sure you get all of these cute little details. And if you don't know what kind of dog this is, this is a Basset Hound. They are literally the most fun ever. Just a very fun breed of dog. Now, the reason I am going so fast is if I spend too much time with this paper on the surface, it will stick and I will end up with a lot of paper where I don't want paper. I 
wish I had more detail on the ears, but it will work for now. Now a good way to tell is if you've done the area is you can feel it and then that'll tell you that that area has been taken care of. And then I want to get her foot. And maybe one or two little freckles left. Oh, almost missed that spot. Let's feel it. All right. Okay, so then you're going to take it and you can see a little bit of paper stuck, but that's no big deal. I'm gonna save this, because this is gonna be my template for how I'm gonna bring it out. Then this little bits of paper, you just take your cleanup tool and you just lift them off. This is far better than some of the other tools you have for getting this paper off. And the paper will burn out so technically we don't even need to remove it, but since I'm going to be laying clay on top of some of this, I just want to get it out of here. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at our picture. What area is going to come farthest forward? So the farthest forward would be her nose because she is looking straight up at you. So this whole area is going to be built out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and if it's hard for you to see your lines, there is nothing wrong with going back in and darkening them or making them clearer for you. That is completely fine. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of my clay. Let's look at some of the other tools that I have here. I have some small loop tools that I'm going to be using. These have different shapes on the tips. I have a variety of rubber tip smoothers, so a lot of different ones. Um, I don't know which one's gonna work best, so I just got them all. Then I have one of these with the little balls on the end. That would be great for putting in little textures around her nose. I have my cleanup tool, I have my needle tool, I have my pencil. I have a popsicle stick because you never know if you're going to need a little tiny smoother. And then of course paintbrush, water, uh, paper towel to wipe things off, my rubber smoother if I'm going to need it, slip, and that's it. So those are going to be what I'm going to start with. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently start, here's the picture, I'm going to kind of keep it right there, and I'm going to start laying clay in and I'm gonna start blending it. Okay, so I'm gonna start blending it down. And what this is gonna do is it gonna, it's gonna start gently raising it out. Now, this is very wet. So, you are going to not want to do any super fine details at this point. You're just roughing in the areas so that you can Start building out your surfaces. And remember, you need a foreground. So let's look at this foreground, which is the part that comes the farthest forward. Middle ground, which is going to be this. Then the background, where we're going to start taking a little clay away, is all of this. So we're just going to start laying our clay in. And I find it's easiest to start by adding in the clay. Now, this part is just a little bit behind, so I press it down, let the clay come forward, and these are very subtle. 
Okay, so you want to make sure that you're not just laying in giant chunks of clay. And then I'm going to start bringing out her little, the little part right here. And I'm going to leave the area with her nostrils pressed in, so I'm just going to go around it. It's gonna go like that and I can always go back in and add a little bit more clay but I am not outlining so the, somebody was talking about how you do this and they were saying oh you just outline it that is not what you do at all you are going to gently start filling in your different levels and then I just kind of take this I'm just going to kind of blend that in. And then bring it back. So I'm starting to get two levels here, actually. And then I can't really get a lot of detail at this point, but I just want to start roughing it. And then this one is one of my favorites for getting and adding depth to an area where I want to transition a little bit, but I still want to maintain a nice separation. All right, so you can see how wet this is, but you kind of get the idea. So I'm gonna pull this up a little closer so that you can see where it's starting to change so that you can see the difference in what's happening. Okay, so that's how you start and then you're gonna continue on doing this. Um, it's a good idea to let this uh, set up. So put your initial clay on, don't cover it, just start working small areas and then assessing it as you go. I also find taking a photograph of it as you kind of are working on it, really helps to see helps you to see where it needs more depth versus where it has enough depth, um, and it makes it easier to see where you need to add. So, okay, that's how you start.